Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm in a different background because it's too sunny where I normally film because I have to film in the evening now because I am a working woman. Anyway, Today we are talking November TBR and I'm not playing my TBR game this month and I'm sorry if you were hoping that I would be but I need to like get back into actually reading to enjoy reading instead of reading what my TBR wants me to read because um, I didn't have a very good reading month in October because I wasn't very like compelled to read any of the books that I had so instead um, I wasn't even going to make a TBR video, but then Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy posted that she's doing a goal-hitting kind of readathon, where, like, there's no rewards or anything. Well, you reward yourself, but there's no, like, board or anything. So you don't have to hold yourself accountable to, like, specific prompts. Um, so it is called Knock It Out November, and basically what you do is you just set a couple goals that you want to hit during the month, and then you give yourself a reward when you hit them. I haven't figured out what my reward is going to be for each one, but I'm kind of just, like, going to talk through a bunch of the books I have that could fit each of the goals that I'm trying to do, and... Yeah, that's, that's the plan for today because I want to have more options of what I read than I have been having. So, um, let's start with the first goal, which is to read as much nonfiction as possible, but at least one nonfiction book in November because it's nonfiction November and I love learning. And since I'm not in school, I think that I need to read some more nonfiction. So... We have a few options that I own and then a couple options that I might look at trying to get um, my hands on. So um, the first two I've talked about a couple of times on this channel. The first one is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. And I think this is the one I'm going to kick off the month with, but we'll see. This is essentially an in-depth kind of journey into how the internet breeds. Um extremism in young men and the incel culture and all that kind of stuff. I bought this when I was in the UK and I started reading it already. Um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like I only made it through like part of the introduction, but I think this is going to be fascinating and I'm very excited to read it. Then I also have The Power of Regret by Daniel H. Pink, which is about um, using regret to kind of like build forward in your life instead of be stuck in the past so essentially they surveyed he surveyed people and used the also um a couple other surveys um that identify the four core regrets that people have and then uses a process to figure out how we can like make them a positive thing and use them to help our lives so Regret keeps coming up a lot for me in therapy. <laughs> um, so this is another one that I'd really like to get to this month. Then I grabbed this book from the library and it could also fit for another goal that I'd like to hit. Um, but this one, is, I just literally saw it like on the shelf and it's um, the called The Infernal Library on Dictators, the Books They Wrote and Other Catastrophes of Literacy by Daniel Calder. So essentially this book... Um, in, investigates dictators who wrote books, poetry, any types of literature to further their goals. And it, essentially it asks the question, how did the production of literature become central to the running of regimes? What do these books reveal about the dictatorial soul? And how can books and literacy, most often viewed as inherently positive, cause immense and lasting harm? And I think this will be fascinating. It's definitely a little bit more academically dense than the other two. Um, but I'm fascinated by dictatorships and how dictators come to power. So I think this will be really fascinating mixing my love of books and history. So those are some, those are three, um, possibilities of books I already have. And then on my nonfiction TBR. So, um, another one that I have, which actually, um, what is her name? 
Mary, I think is her name. Mary Jo Hedrick, one of the, another YouTuber that I follow talked about this book on her TBR for November and I do want to see if I can get it, but it's always so expensive. Same with the other one I'm going to talk about that I'm like not 100% sure. Um, but anyway, um, it's called Say Nothing and it's about um, the IRA and it talks about the bitter conflict in Northern Ireland and its aftermath using the McConville case as a starting point for the tale of society wrecked by violent Guerrero warfare, a war whose consequences have never been reckoned with. So I am really interested in this one, but it's 519 pages and quite expensive, so I'm not sure if I'll get to it. Um, the other one that's on here is Empire of Pain, the secret history of the Sackler dynasty, um, which talks about basically like how this one family managed to get like basically create the drug um, crisis by the opioid crisis by creating and marketing Oxycontin. So that's another one that's really interesting to me. But every time I've seen um, that book at the store, it's like 50 bucks. So we will see. But those are the nonfiction books that I want to read this month for that goal. The second goal is to read my book club books. Um, this goal is a little bit on hold right now because I don't actually know what one of the book club books is and I already know I'm not reading the other one. So really the one book that I know I want to and I'm actually going to buy the audiobook for so that I know I want to listen to this month is High School by Tegan and Sarah. Um, if you're not Canadian I don't know how like popular Tegan and Sarah are. Um, let me look up the synopsis. So essentially this is like a memoir and it's the irrelevatory and unique coming of age story of Sarah and Tegan Quinn, identical twins from Calgary, Alberta, which is where I'm from, who grew up at the height of grunge and rave culture in the 90s well before they became the celebrated musicians and global LGBTQ icons we know today. While grappling with their identity and sexuality often alone, they also faced academic meltdown, their parents' divorce, and the looming pressure of what might come after high school. Written in alternating chapters from Tegan and Sarah's points of view, the book is a raw account of the drugs, alcohol, love, music, and friendship they explored in their formative years. I think this one will be really interesting because it's in my city, um, which I think will be quite cool. And uh, it's narrated by them, so it'll be a great audiobook, I think, and I'm excited to read that. So that one's for Violet's Book Club. Um, and then we also have whatever book we're reading for Not Wasting My 20s Book Club, which is hopefully going to be um, in, in the U.S. It's Indigenous History Month, so it's hopefully going to be um, an Indigenous uh, book, whether it's American, Indigenous, or Canadian. So that one will be on the list. If I know anything about it, I'll put a picture up, but I don't know if I'm going to know before I edit this video. The third goal is that is to stop paying my Kindle Unlimited subscription. And to do this, I need to finish the Dirty Air series because it's really the only thing I've been reading on Kindle Unlimited. And Book of the Month is coming to Canada tomorrow, November 1st. I'm not sure when you'll see this video, but it's coming to Canada and I want to replace my Kindle Unlimited subscription with the Book of the Month one because it's about equal price. And I I really don't use Kindle Unlimited that much um, and I can always get it back but the only thing that's stopping me from canceling the subscription is that I haven't read um what is the last one why do I not know what the last one is redeemed okay it doesn't start with a b so this is the f1 series um that I've been reading and this is the last book um redeemed with salvatore so i'm very excited to read it but i just want to read it and then cancel my subscription so i can stop paying for kindle Un unlimited okay and the fourth goal the last goal of november is to try and finish as much as possible my reading challenges that i've been doing this year so we only have a few remaining prompts um for the rad reads challenge the only one that I have not, um, I haven't put it an image here for book to movie adaptation, but I'm going to put Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I need to read a book about food. I also need to read a translated book, which I actually think Anxious People is a translated book. So I'm going to, oh, I already used that though. I need to look back through what I read 
see if I read any translated books because I like I must have but if not I need to read a translated book and then I need to read a book with time travel and these are both for the red Taylor's version reading challenge um all too well is the translated book and then the very first night is the book with time travel and that's it so in order to check off food and time travel i'm going to be reading before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi i just bought this um on the weekend and essentially it's a book about a little cafe in tokyo where you can travel back in time but only for the duration of the cup of coffee before it gets cold which like if this doesn't just like fit my vibe like I don't know a book that fits my vibe better than like having the limit of before your coffee gets cold but anyway so there's a bunch of stories that people of people going back in time and it's also just this cute little book anyway this has been on my list it's one of the first books i ever added to my tbr and i just caved and purchased it on the weekend so that will count for time travel and food and then i'll have to take a look about translated books i'm sure i have something to read um i do actually have another non-fiction which is translated and it is on here um, it's uh, Voices from Chernobyl, the oral history of the nuclear disaster, um, which sounds like absolutely insane. I'm not really sure why I bought it, but I did. <laughs> but it's definitely translated. So if I didn't, um, if I can't check it off with a book I've read this year, then I will try and read that one. And that doesn't have to happen before the end of this month, but I need to finish those before the end of the year. So those are my four goals for November. Let me know. Oh, wait, there's one other reading challenge that I didn't mention, um, which is the Bad Bitch Book Club reading challenge. And it's the one that I'm the furthest from completing. Why did I not find it? Where is it hiding? Oh, here it is. So for this one, I need library rec. I need non-binary protagonist and I need has daddy in the title. <laughs> So maybe I shouldn't cancel my Kindle Unlimited subscription quite yet for the daddy one. But anyway, um, if I can get to this one, then I will include that for the library rec because it does have a recommendation sticker and it was on the recommended table. If not, I will find another solution to that question. But if you have any recommendations for non-binary protagonist or daddy in the title, down, please let me know down below in the comments. Also, translated books that you like. Um, but anyway, those are all of my goals for the month of November and some of the books that I'm going to hopefully mood read my way through for this month. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you've made it this far. Comment down below what one book you're reading for November is. If you're doing Cassie's challenge read, read along thingy, read, read a thon. <laughs> and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!